So we're doing a lot of expanding in the garden this year, and most of it's in the form of trellises. Growing vertically is so much more efficient than growing horizontally to us. And we like to design systems that are gonna work for us long term, years down the road. We don't want something we're gonna have to take down and put back up every year. That's why we design and execute some of these projects the way that we do. And this trellis we designed to plant tomatoes under this year. Hopefully we'll plant some small melons under in the future. Let me know down in the comments below if you've ever tried small melons. Anyway, we've linked some of the products we use in this video down below. Let's get to the build. First thing I got to do, I have to set my very first post. This one needs to be set plumb. So I'm just gonna kind of mark where I'm gonna set it. Kind of lining it up straight with the end of my raised beds. I'm gonna start my holes with this clamshell digger. Then I have my trusty post hole auger. I keep a piece of tape on it at 24 inches. That's how deep I like to drill my holes. That works great for us in this clay. If you've seen my blackberry trellis video, you know I'm a big fan of putting something in the bottom for drainage. I like to use gravel. I'm gonna put about four inches in the bottom. I'm using four by four by eight footers for my posts. I like to tap the gravel down a little bit with the post. And like I said, we want to get this one plumb, so I'm gonna attach a couple of two by four by eights with a single screw towards the top of the post. And these two by fours will help you hold the post. And I'm gonna get it real close to level, not to try to get it dead on or nothing, but I'm gonna get it in the ballpark both ways. And then I like to backfill my holes with dry concrete mix. This works great for me. I can pour it in here and keep on working. We've never had any issues with post rotting on this property. We've done it like this for years. So we're gonna continue to do it that way. I like to kind of crown my concrete around the post. That way it's above grade and any water will drain away from the post. I keep a bunch of these wooden stalbs on hand because we're always tinkering with something stupid. Yep, 16 to 24 inches long. And I'm gonna drive one of these beside each one of these two before by eights. I'm gonna go ahead and start a screw, but I'm not gonna screw it through yet. And these are gonna let me hold this post perfectly plumb once I get it there. Even with this concrete in here, you can still tweak this post a little bit and get it exactly where you want it. Check it on both sides and then double check it. Because if you move one, it's gonna throw the other one off just a hair. So I like that pretty good. I'm gonna screw that one down. And then down here at the far end, I'm gonna measure out again, 11 foot from my beds. But this time I'm gonna drive four foot stall past my raised beds. I'm gonna be sure it's out of my way. And I'm gonna secure this post back to one of them smaller stalls. And it doesn't matter if this stall is level. This is basically just a system to pull the string to that first post we put up. There's gonna be a lot of tension on the string and I'm gonna put marks where I want every single post to be buried at. So I don't want that string to be moving any. I want it to stay where I put it. You know, I don't want it to have any give back and forth. I'm gonna put a screw in the side of the post and that will be to hook my string to. I don't wanna wrap it around the post. I want to have a loop in the string to hook it on there. In case I want to take the string off, I can put it right back on and the marks will still be in the same place. We're pulling in the ballpark of 100 foot on this string. So it has to be tight. I like to get it three or four foot from my post. I'm gonna go ahead and put a loop in it and then pull it tight and hook it to that screw on this post. If it ain't tight enough, put another loop in it, but I think that was pretty good and tight. We're gonna have a total of 13 posts buried on this trellis and it works out that I'm gonna have seven foot six inches on the inside of each four by four post or between each post. I'm gonna go along and mark where I want them to be on this string. I have a hundred foot tape measure here. I like a metal tape measure. A metal tape measure won't stretch if you have a fiberglass one. It will work, but the tighter you pull on it, the more it is apt to stretch. The distance, the first post is at seven foot and nine and a half inches, and then at eight foot one inch. After I mark this, I always want to be able to come back to this as a reference. That's how I'm gonna set every one of these posts, is right by that string, right by them marks. And the next one works out to be 15 foot seven inch, and then at 15, 10 and a half. And it's just rinse and repeat from here. And the very last one works out to be 93 foot nine and a half inches eight side to eight side of the entire trellis. And that's why we set that post back that west side the way of the last post. Then I have my good friend Plumbob here, not SpongeBob, that's Plumbob with a P. 
It's supposed to have a tip on it, but I've lost mine. Either way, basically it's just a weight on a string and I'm gonna line it up with those marks that I made and it's just gonna let me fairly accurately take my marking paint and mark where the post is gonna be on the grain and that's where I'll dig out. And now with all those marked, I can pull the string back off, set it to the side, and dig all my holes. And when I put the string back on, everything will still be back referenced the same as before. And now with both outside posts set, I'm going to start setting the center post. Usually my wife helps me with this, but she's running the camera. So I did want to show how you could do it by yourself. And it's basically the same thing as the first post. If you just go ahead and fasten both your two before, you can move it around. And I'm just constantly checking for level and trying to get it in between them two black marks that we made. I may have to maneuver the bottom of the post a little bit. I'm not gonna let it completely touch the line because it will start to push that string off a little. So I'm gonna just get it real close, maybe an eighth of an inch off. Other than the very first post that we set, I'm only going to leave one brace on and this will be the brace that pulls the post away from the string or to the string, whichever you want to call it. I want to be able to push and pull the post forward and back whenever I'm putting the horizontal rails on and that'll be a little more obvious why in just a minute. Well, with all 13 posts set, that makes for a pretty straight row if I have to say so myself. The next thing I want to do is get a level line all the way down these posts. So I've came down here to my first post. This is actually the lowest point of my ground. I've already got the transit set up and down here the bottom rail is going to be roughly 12 inches off the ground. And this post is at the highest point of my ground and it's probably roughly going to have the rail 10 inches off of the ground here. And now we're just going to go along and put a mark on every post so we have a reference line to go by. And with the speed square, I can transfer a perpendicular line to the front of each post. For the rails, I'm going to use 2 by 4 by 16s. So I'm going to measure from my end post down to the center of this post. And that'll have me 188 and 3 quarters. I'm going to go ahead and cut two boards that length. I'll check for my crown, put the crown up. I'm going to put a screw in this post so it'll hold my board up while I screw the other end. We're using three inch exterior grade screws. I'd already marked all my X's on here, but I decided I want to put my board underneath my line instead of on top of my line. What I'm doing, I'm gonna put two rails on one side of the post and two on the other. So I got a couple of two befores here. I'm gonna use them as spacers. I've cut them to 27 and a half inches. I'm just gonna temporarily screw them to a couple of the posts. And that just lets me have something else to sit this rail on and keep the spacing uniform at the same time. This is why I did not want any type of braces on this post side to side. In case I wanted to move them right now, I'm going to mark the center of my post, which is going to be an inch and three quarters on a four by four post. And which this one is going to be dead on. But if it wasn't, I'd be able to move the post back and forth to get it where I wanted it to be for the center post. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check the spacer down here at the bottom. We're about 93 and 7 eighths. And I'm going to be sure it's the same up here. If not, I'll move this post. And again, we're dead on, 93 and 7 eighths. Who set these posts? Man, wow. To get my measurements for the rails on the other side, I have a 12 inch block cut here. And I'm just gonna have to mark, put a mark. And then I'll transfer the mark all the way around with the speed square. There's gonna be four rails on this trellis, two on each side, if I break every single piece of lumber on the same post, it's going to make for a weak joint. It's going to give the post the ability to sway back and forth and come out of line. So what we're going to do on this side, we're going to cut the two befores on the first post. So they'll be cut about eight foot. And that's how we're going to run them the whole way down. So two rails will break on every single post, but there will also be a rail that runs across every post. In the end, it will make for a lot more sturdy trellis. And just like the other side, I'm going to use my 27 and a half inch spacers. And that's how the four rail system is going to be set up. Now I think I'm going to go along and put the front side on first, and then I'll come back and work on the back side. Every board now will go across two posts. It'll be roughly 16 foot. I will not have to cut any more short like this until I get to the very end of the trellis. And now it's finally time to cut some of these panels. I'm going to go ahead and cut my vertical ones first. As I stated earlier, I have seven foot six inches between each four by four post. This bar here is dead center of the panel at eight foot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my grinder and I'm gonna cut along beside this bar the whole way down and this bar the whole way down. The grinder makes for a smoother and easier cut, but if you don't have a grinder, bolt snips are a great alternative and you are gonna end up with a piece of wasted material that looks like that. 
And what I'm doing for my horizontal panels, I'm cutting them the long way. I'm getting four pieces out of a single panel. I'm cutting them right beside this bar, then here, and then here. And then you should end up with four pieces that look like this. I'm just kind of weaving the panel between the four by four posts and also between the two sides of the rails. I'm trying to get it just a back flush with the top rail. Then I'm using inch and a half roofing screws and one inch fender washers. That's what I'm holding in place with. The fender washer just bites the panel a lot better and it really holds it snug. You never have to worry about it backing out like you would a fence staple. Then I'm using a few of these staples. They're actually poultry net staples. They're a little bit smaller than a regular fence staple. They're so small, I'm using a set of needle nose pliers to get them started. And I'm gonna just put a few of these in for a little extra support on the panel. Then for my horizontal rails, I'm running more roofing screws and fender washers. I'm using five of them per 16 foot panel. Then I'm just gonna drive in a few more staples, one at about every other bar. Where the two panels meet, I'm gonna use a metal zip tie just to hold them flush. This tool here tightens them and we'll cut them all at the same time. And that actually makes for a pretty sturdy rail. For the very last panel, obviously you could measure it before you put it on, but I just put the entire 16 foot piece on and then I'm gonna take my grinder and just cut it to fit. I would love to have a raised bed under this trellis, but that's just gonna be a little out of the budget. So we're gonna go with the cheap man approach this year. Before I put the horizontal panels on this side, I'm gonna dig some eight inch diameter holes about 12 inches deep. We already have marks on the grind every 30 inches. That's how far we're gonna space our plants. And we're just gonna backfill these holes with some gin trash. And that's how we're gonna get through this year. We tried to dig some of these holes earlier with the triton and alder, but we're already in a little bit of a drought and the ground was just so hard, I couldn't get it to go in the ground. And with the trellis completely assembled, I feel pretty good about going ahead and take all my braces off. The concrete is starting to set up but it really won't be any tremendous resistance on the trellis until the tomato plants get some height on them. I want to cut all my 4x4 posts the same height. It really doesn't matter what height you choose. You can just find your shortest post and cut every one of them that same length. But I'm just going to use this 12 inch block that I already had. I'm going to rest it right on top of my rail. Be sure that it's not on the panel, but it's on the rail. And then I'm going to put a mark at the top. And I need that line to be on both sides of the post so I can cut it with my circular saw. So I'm going to transfer the rain with my speed square. The last thing we're gonna to do to the trellis is put these caps on top of the four before posts. The end grain on top of these posts is gonna act as a sponge every time it rains and they're gonna absorb a lot of moisture and they'll actually start rotting from the top. So these are gonna protect it. The link down below if you want to check them out. They're gonna add a decorative look to the post and protect it all at the same time. They come with the screws. It's just two screws per cap. My plan for growing the tomato plants on here is as they grow up, I will zip tie them or either use tomato clips to secure them to this panel. And some of the branches will spread out and secure along the way. And of course, as they grow up, we'll just continue to secure them. And that's when we'll be able to take advantage of some of the horizontal panels. These will carry the load of some of the branches and the tomatoes as well. We have panels on both sides we can use. I don't believe the determinants will ever reach the top of this trellis, but some of the indeterminants we grow definitely will. Last year, we just used regular tomato cages, and this design should create better airflow and more sunlight will be able to penetrate each plant. And you can see how I fastened the panels with the fender washers and the staples. The fender washers and screws are carrying the bulk of the load, but the staples just add a little extra to it. The spacing on my rails is 27 and a half inches from the top of this rail to the bottom of this rail. And then from the top of this rail to the bottom of this side is 12 inches and then 27 and a half inches again, in case you want to replicate this design. And that works out perfect for a 50 inch panel. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the build. Check out some of the products we use linked down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.